Damn, this is heavy. I don't know if you guys have seen the video yet. I did, um, I was basically talking about uh, these cheaper dimmer switches, you know, like lap dimmer switches and stuff. They're just junk, man. They really are. They're just absolute trash. I did a callback on uh, on a job the other week. It was a dimmer switch that had failed, but it was it was three two gang dimmer switches. But of course, by the time you, you buy like a, v, a double V Pro dimmer, well, that's like 25 quid for a, for a double gang dimmer. You know, you're talking like sort of 75 quid, then your own time, you just end up being hugely out of pocket just because you try and save like a, you know, like a tenner the first time round. It's just not, it's just not worth it. Like, so I've just ended up, because that really pissed me off the other day, you ended up just doing a callback and you just lose so much money on them. And you can't charge the client for callbacks either. That's the other thing, because if it's inside 12 months, you know, customers can say, well, it's not my fault, you know? So, I mean, you can give them an invoice, but they won't, um, but they won't bloody pay it. And it looks a bit shit if you do, you know, if you're, if you've got to replace something in, you know, in just the short period of 12 months, I mean, it doesn't look great. Do you know what I mean? It's, these are those, uh, MK, these double USB sockets. Um, and, uh, they're not too expensive. I think they're about 25 quid each, somewhere around there. They're not, I mean, they are, when you consider like, um, you know, you can buy a pair of British general ones for like 15 quid, it does make you wonder. But that's not strictly true because I've got um, I've got a callback actually I've got to do. Um, I fitted it about 18 months ago. In fact, not even that, about 12 months ago. And it was a BG USB socket, which has stopped working. The customer just says it's now making a buzzing noise, but it's not. The, the USB bit inside isn't actually working, it's not charging. So, I don't know. Je ne sais pas. Uh, no, the grunting was referring to this box here. I don't often walk into wholesalers and walk out with a box full of MK, but uh, the customer here requested they wanted MK, so uh, here it is. That was an expensive little shop. In the interest of safety, this product should only be installed by a competent person. Shit. Okay, all right, I'll have to find someone else to do it. All right, now that's that bad boy fitted, next job is over here. In fact, some of you saw this kitchen at the very beginning. Uh, and this is more or less the finished result. Um, but anyway, there's that pendant. I put these spots in, these Collingwood lights here, Collingwood. Um, and this pendant here has got to go. In fact, that switch there, the builder's just plastered that bit of wall there and he's just left those switches hanging. And that pendant there, that switch controls the, that pendant there. But it's got to, we've got to take that out and we've got to move it. There's going to be a centre dangly light fitting sort of here-ish. So we've got to move that pendant basically over to here. Right, so I'm going to go into the loft and do battle with those now. Oh, bless their cotton socks. It's so annoying when you see it. The old twisted together earth routine. Fuck, it's irritating when you see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily, I'm just going to put all of these in a box with some Wago connectors and I'm going to leave it in the floor here for a second because I'm still not sure. They're raising this floor. I said in one of my previous videos, they're raising this floor and I'm still not sure exactly what they're doing so i'm just going to leave a bit of slack on these and i'll leave this in the floor for a second till we know sort of exactly what's happening i shall mark these while i'm here because otherwise i shall forget in a month's time when i'm back here switch white god you can hear the motorbikes outside it's a beautiful day absolutely i've got to work outside this afternoon you'll see in a sec because it's sunday today i don't normally work weekends but this is a necessity this week God, I'd love to be out of my Ducati today. Stunning weather. There are quite a few of you who sort of really relate to that, you know, that video when I was washing my van. I mean, ignoring the bit about uh, me washing the wheels and then washing the paintwork. I mean, it's a f***ing van, do you know what I mean? It's not a fucking Bugatti Veyron, it's a van. But anyway, a couple of you really, a lot of you actually really related to it. It was kind of nice to see actually. A sleeve with 66 cut ends because that's the, 
seems to be what happens. You start off with a 100 meter hank and you start cutting it neatly on the outside and eventually you get fucked off one day and you just start cutting it anywhere and this is the end result. There's a definite smell of poo up here. I think there's a drain, there's a open, open drain cover here. Some of you were asking why did I pick London as a place, you know, when I moved there and stuff, and it was just, it was just desperation, that's all. It was nothing more than that. I had no income as such, and I had to move somewhere, and I just decided to move to a big city. That was it. Just, that was, I had no sort of real income. It was just, uh, I had to do something. I had to do something, otherwise I was just going to end up being, you know, getting deeper and deeper in the shit. So that's what happened. I just picked London. There was no particular reason. It was just one of those things I did. Come on. There we go. Right. right, that's that done. Let's go downstairs and mount that light fitting. <laughs> Get used to working at loss. If, you've, uh, if you're coming out your apprenticeship, it's a very common place you'll find yourself. This light fitting came from John Lewis, so I've got a feeling that it costs somewhere in the region of about four point five million pounds. But it's quite nice. It's quite nice though. I think it's actually an outside light, but it actually suits this place. It looks quite nice. Blah. So that's the finished result. But that little pendant there has come out now. That's now moved to this light fitting here. But it looks quite nice. I don't think it would look as nice as that. It's quite pleasing actually. I think it goes quite nicely with this brickwork here, this wood. It's quite a nice finish actually, I like it. Day two. Right, said Fred. Quote time. I was going to do like a sort of crashing in motion, but this is somebody else's property, so I've got to be a little bit respectful, like... Oh, that, that, that didn't work. Okay, never mind. Okay, so welcome back everybody. Now, uh, when I was at Renault the other day, picking up said vans, it was just, it was pure coincidence that I met um, this guy when I was there picking the vans up and we had the drone out and stuff. This guy just sort of came up to me and he just said, I've got a business nearby um, and I'm picking up my vans as well. And it's this company just over here. And it transpires that these guys here go Bob. It's such a cool name. Um, and uh, basically he had four of these vans and he picked them up and he was, uh, he'd, it's something to do with like steam cleaning, balloting, that sort of thing. And uh, anyway, when I was there, he was picking these vans up and he said, I've got a storage, I've got an industrial unit, which is this one here, which he needed some electrical work doing in. So um, as it happens, he was also a subscriber. So it just kind of, it was one of those strange things that sort of worked. Um, but anyway, we're here now, there's my van there and we've got to do some electrical work here. So I'll go through, same procedure as normal, I'll go through what needs to be done, just have a think about it, put your figures in time below, what you think of the job in general. If I come back here, you get a better perspective of it. So it is, it's a big old unit. Um, they've got these LED lights up here with PIR sensors built into them. Um, I think it had just been refurbished. It's a lovely unit. And that's obviously the sliding door where I've just driven in. Um, so what they want, this is the panel over here. Okay, so we've got, we've got a three phase incomer, yada, yada, yada. Come on. And we've got a load of spare space. Now what the guy wants is over on that side over there and this side over here, he needs um, the three phase commando sockets, the, the round commando pin sockets. So he needs one that side and one that side there somewhere. So I'm guessing uh, if it was me, it would probably be, I would follow suit the way the other people have done it. And they've got, um, they've got a piece of 50 mil tray and they just clip the armor to it. In fact, they've got it over there. You can just see it there. There's a little emergency light and they've just done the same thing, bit of 50 mil tray, clip the armor to it. So a bit of tray's got to come up down there around to a commando socket there. And we've got to put um, some 13 amp plugs, like a, a metal clad 13 amp socket next to it. But somewhere there, so there'll be a, a commando socket and then there'll be a regular socket next to it. And then for that one that's over here, I'm guessing you could either just take it up and then just some steel, um, some steel ties, just take it along the, along the girder there, around down to here, I guess. You could do it that way. Or, I mean, uh, the, the power's already gonna be there, so you could just extend the tray and just take it all the way around here, I guess. I don't know. Up to you, I'll leave that decision to you. I will probably end up just putting tray. By the time you find a set of ladders that's long enough to get all the way up there, 
it's probably easier just to have a bit of tray and just clip the armoured to it all the way around. Uh, they also want some CCTV. They've actually got, they've supplied a CCTV system here already. They've got like a four camera system. It's a wired system, but the cables that come with it, I think are 18 meters long. So they're not actually long enough. So you've got to extend them, but I'll show you where it's got to go actually. So that brick pillar there, we've got to put one camera there, which looks over this way. And there's another one in this little entrance hallway here. I'll show you. I've got to be honest, I'd love an industrial unit like this. Can you imagine how much work you could start producing and pumping out if you had a unit like this? Um, you know, it's kind of, it makes my heart ache because that's actually one of the things I really want, a proper industrial unit where you can just drive your vans in, you can unload in the dry, you haven't got to worry about the weather. You know, and there's a little office upstairs. It's such a fantastic little setup. I am quite envious of this fellow. He's I'm quite envious. Anyway, this is a little entrance hallway there. So the front door's just here. Sorry about the flicker, but the front door's there and the camera's got to go more or less behind me in that corner just to, just to watch this entrance here. And that's basically about it. Um, so just put your prices below. Actually, no, hold on, because there's got to be another camera. Go past the Go Bob vans. If I open this, it's going to set an alarm off or something. No, good. Ah, okay, so there's a, this is the rear loading loading area here so they want another camera just somewhere here i guess just to look over this rear door so there you go that's basically about it leave your prices below what you think you charge for it just leave all your thoughts below because it's quite interesting because i think it helps a lot of the younger ones who are coming in to give a gauge of pricing and what things are actually worth as opposed to what people price it if that makes any sense so anyway i'm gonna love you leave you see you on the next video